Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for April 23rd, 2018, episode 55. You give us headlines, or you give us 20 minutes, don't give us headlines, we'll give you the headlines, and we'll give you headlines for the self-reliant. You can get show notes at iState.tv slash H055, which is linked in the video description below if you're on YouTube and kind of to the side if you're on Facebook. Today's show is entitled The Fortnite Path to Higher Education. On this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed with Paul Gordon, Fortnite's College Credentials. A house in two days, Coinbase assault, DNA cops, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. There we go. You see that title if you're watching on video? Fortnite your way through college with Gaming Scholarship. We are starting off this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed with your lulls of the day. That doesn't happen just any day, so you know this is going to be a special day. So, you're in your mom's basement, you're eating your cheese curls, and you're you're chugging down on your yoo-hoos and the, the cheese curls and the yoo-hoos your mom brought down to you after you screamed up, Mom, my, my cheese curls. I'm dying down here. Now, your mom, your mom, she comes downstairs with a, a lovely tray of the cheese curls and a yoo-hoo, and you're, you're channeling your inner Cartman, like I just said there, and I'm about ready to do again, when you say, of course I want cheesy curls, even as inside your head, you're mouthing cheesy poofs. She looks at you with the disdain of a thousand suns frowning on an advancing black hole, but she loves you. And she uh, equates love to seeing to your every indulgence. Aren't you a lucky boy? But alas, dad's home. And he's storming downstairs now after having taken a header into the sink for the third time this week because he slid on the wet towel you left on the flooded bathroom floor after taking a three-hour shower that left no hot water for anyone else to take a shower or even for your mom to do the laundry. You, you, you suck. You basically suck, you degenerate. So he, he's, he's, he's not so, so, so patient uh, with the whole black hole approaching thing. So his disdain of a thousand suns is not hemmed in by his interpretation of his of love being seeing to your every indulgence. So he lets loose with the fury of zombies. But one of those more intelligent zombies, not the Roger Corman zombies, but more like the World War Z kind of zombies. A little bit more animated, you know. Still Still, he's a freaking zombie. So he lets loose with these words. All you do is sit out here all day and night, pissing your life away, playing these stupid video games. What are you going to grow up and do something with your life? And then uh, D. D. Snyder of Twisted Sitter comes out. Twisted Sister comes out, desperate for another hit, uh, because he's 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 gonna relive his glory. He's a little bit older, but he comes down and he says, "I want to play video games. I want to play video." Well, no, no, it's not D. D. Snyder. It's you, because at this point, a righteous joy rises from within you because you've heard this line so often ever since you were nine and you started playing Angry Birds on your sister's iPod, which did not go well with your sister, but that's another episode of I'm a loser that lives in my mom's basement. So you summon up the words that, uh, that you can now summon because Ashland University in Ohio exists. And Ashland University in Ohio is offering a scholarship to the top Fortnite players, which which happens to be the game that you've become a master at, Leather. 
That's right. Ashland University is in Ohio is offering a scholarship of $4,000 to the top Fortnite players to become part of their esports program. Yes, esports is a thing, folks, and I'm sure many of you 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 may very well know this and and colleges are are actually starting to form esports leagues. Now, Ashland University has set a precedent that surely other colleges are soon to follow. And maybe some others have already done it, but this is the first time I've heard of it, so it's new to me. So dear old dad can slunk back upstairs, mildly concussed thanks to your wet tile incident, unable to respond after you say, Dear father, I am aware of what I must do to prepare myself for a prosperous and independent future. To that end, I have been working up the hierarchy of Fortnite players in an effort to earn a college scholarship, since you spent all my college money on IPAs and trips to that special place that you told me not to talk about in front of Mom. And dear old Dad, he looks at you and he grunts. He grunts the grunt of a thousand grunts. And he glances at, at his wife, at the wife, which is, of course, your mom, who, who missed the dangerous reference to the special place because she's wondering if you should be wearing a sweater when you sit down in the cold basement playing video games. And everything is safe and secret, and Dad has been sufficiently shamed. He goes up the stairs, a thin trail of blood still lacing down his forehead, a not-so-proud reminder of the wet toweling he experienced not more than ten minutes before his pride, his dignity, his safety from his own wife was put in doubt. Thanks to Ashland, you're not a loser, buddy. You're a winner. You're an eSports jock, and you're gonna get paid. And the college will also be offering scholarships for esports athletes, and and I'm wondering if that's a thing. Is there such a thing as an athlete? Because if there isn't, there freaking should be. Who also excel in Overwatch and League of Legends. There'll be open tryouts conducted in the future at times to be announced. And this school has has about 4,600 students, and it hopes to attract some attention to the school through its eSports teams. So the, 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 the cliched basement, mom basement dwellers, there is hope for you kids after all. You know, that's a heartwarming story with a heartwarming ending, and I, I hope you enjoyed that. Everything about that story, of course, was true. Everything. I didn't make up any of it. I made up all of it. Well, except for the part with Ashlyn actually offering the scholarship. Oh, and here it is. Oh. Ah, yes, this is a new feature. This is called uh, Your Daily Dookie. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Your Daily Dookie. Here it is. Coinbase cuts off WikiLeaks from its account. This is a sucky story, a dookie story, and for those of you not in the know, dookie is synonymous with poop. So for those of you in the know, I didn't have to explain this part. But anyway, let's go on. It appears that Coinbase is doing the work of the United States Course of Enterprise in its efforts to silence and halt the work of WikiLeaks. The organization has famously exposed numerous numerous state secrets of multiple coercive enterprises, including the United States. And Coinbase has cut off the organization from accessing its own account. Never fear, though. WikiLeaks still has ways to accept crypto donations, but the move does put a bam damper on their fundraising efforts. And this is from Engadget.com. Coinbase has shut off the WikiLeaks shop's account for allegedly violating allegedly the cryptocurrency exchange's term of terms of services. In other words, the leak site just lost its existing means of converting payments like Bitcoin into conventional money. While Coinbase didn't give a specific reason, it declines to comment on specific accounts. It pointed to its legal requirement to honor 
regulatory compliance mechanisms under the U.S.'s Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. So, yeah, this is Coinbase, which, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm being a little harsh on Coinbase. I don't know if they have much of a choice but to comply or die. But <laughs> this just goes to show you, this is just yet another reason why it is that there should be anonymous, not dark web, not deep web, Liberty Web alternatives to things like Coinbase. Uh, the uh, As Andrews and Antonopoulos and The Verge observe, there's a degree of irony here. WikiLeaks adopted cryptocurrency in 2010 precisely to get away from conventional payment services that had shut off access. Format, formats like Bitcoin supposedly couldn't be held back. Well, well, yeah, Bitcoin is not a privacy currency, and uh, uh, Coinbase, any any uh, fintech which is open and entangled with the coercive enterprise is vulnerable to having to accede to the demands of the coercive enterprise. So that's a fair warning, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, your daily dookie. Now let's get to something hopeful, exciting. Startup creates 3D printed house in two days. 3D Housing 05, a collaborative effort with CLS Architect Architetti and Arup has successfully built a 3D printed house in only two days. What's more, the house itself has been 3D printed in such a way that it can easily be deconstructed only to be reassembled easily wherever someone might want to move. And this is from Inhabitat.com. There are a lot of 3D printed houses popping up these days, but this is the first time an architect with the renown of uh, Massimiliano, Massimiliano, I don't know, Massimiliano, I was going to call him Max, Max Locatelli of CLS Architect and Arup has tackled one. Built out of a special quick-drying mortar, the 1,076-square-foot house was constructed in just 48 hours. Locatelli envisions 3D printing as the housing of the future and that his house, house could be constructed anywhere, even the moon. The moon isn't real, by the way. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a false flag operation. I think, I think that scientifically we can prove that. The project, by the way, I made that part up. The Project 3D Housing 05 was built on site by a portable robot as a way of showing how 3D printing can reduce construction waste but still create beautiful space. Biochips built by micropyramids thanks to 3D printing breakthrough. A breakthrough in 3D printing promises to open the door to higher levels or more controlled details of... Uh, more controlled uh, details, uh, which will help organic 3D printing, which can be used to create biochips and a biochip, a definition, a microchip intended to function in a biological environment, in, especially inside a living organism, or also a logical device analogous to the silicon chip whose components are formed from biological molecules or structures. And this is actually both. And this is from uh, spectrum.ieee.org. Uh, making biochips a key technology and studying disease just got a little easier. This new nanoprinting process uses gold-plated pyramids and LED light and photochemical reactions to print more organic materials on the surface of one single biochip than ever before. The tech use, uh, technique uses an array of polymer pyramids, that are covered in gold and mounted onto an atomic force microscope. I really like that polymer pyramids phrase. That's like, that should be the name of my next band. My current band, my one man band, is Frogs Are Alive. I don't know, man. Polymer pyramids, man. And now, ladies and gentlemen, polymer pyramids. These arrays, which are one square centimeter in size, contain thousands of tiny pyramids with holes that allow light through and make sure that the light goes only to specific places on the surface of a chip below, immobilizing delicate organic reagents on the chip surface without damaging them. And now, this could have easily been your daily dookie, uh, uh, but it wasn't. 
It was real close. I really, I, I flip flop back and forth between, between this story and the WikiLeaks story. But this story, well, this story is an emerging story, so I didn't quite make it your daily dookie. But it's uh, definitely a dookie supplement. I'm gonna say that. Houston cops test testing portable DNA machines. What could go wrong? A uh, bunch of gang members have been roving around the city armed with guns and equipped with a device that allows them to collect DNA from people they decide, for one reason or another, should have their DNA collected. And it sounds like a creepy dystopian sci-fi movie. But but it's not. It's, it's real life. Now, the city is Houston, and the armed gang members are police. And that shiny badge, surely, surely the shiny badge, makes it fine for these folks to go around with a device that can collect DNA from people, right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. So for the last 10, and this is from the Daily Sheeple, which, by the way, I appear in regularly. I think I'll have an article appear today, as a matter of fact, about 3D printing. For the last 10 months, Houston police have been testing a new mobile DNA machine called Rapid DNA that runs tests in under two hours. HPD launched a pilot program with the company Andir to test a machine that runs DNA tests in under two hours, local news station reported, blah, blah. This Rapid DNA is the future. Yes, the future of uh, sci-fi dystopia. It comes down to when mathematicians stopped using abacuses and started using calendars. It's that important to criminal justice. Justice. I'm sure it'll only be used for justice. Uh, as part of the test program, proper protocols for using the technology has been to swab each piece of evidence twice. First, the Houston, Houston Forensic Science Center takes an official sample for the lab. Then Houston police take a second sample for the trial machine. Houston police has you have used rapid DNA analysis in approximately 60 cases for which range for, uh, so far, which range from aggravated assaults to murders, according to the report. And I'm not totally completely against this technology and against using it to solve crimes. I'm just I'm just skeptical that a tool like this, that a powerful tool like this in the hands of the coercive enterprise will not be used for ways which are not so intended to solve crimes where people actually hurt one another. But anyway, and what what's going to happen to that DNA database afterwards? It's good stuff, good times. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of moving toward that sci-fi dystopian uh, lovely uh, reality that we, we all welcome so much. Scientists create theoretical ice that is almost as hot as the sun. That's right, you heard me right. Ice is hot as the sun. Well, almost. I, I was so tempted to just say as hot as the sun and use that clickbait. But I didn't, man. I didn't sell out. It was once a theoretical possibility of sci-fi pondering, but has now become fact. Actual reality, Fact. What am I talking about? I'm talking about ice that is almost as hot as the sun. That's right. You heard me, and it bears repeating. I said ice exists, has been created, that is literally almost as hot as the sun. I don't know if I've repeated that enough because it's pretty freaking awesome. Unless, of course, you're holding it, then it sucks. The 60 times denser than water ice is believed to be what exists on planets like Uranus and Neptune, but scientists in the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California have actually created the almost as hot as the sun ice. It's real. It exists. And now I'm going to get to a story that I'm only going to touch on a little bit, but I've written a whole article on this and... I'm willing to bet this is this is this is going to be. We may end up talking about this tomorrow on. Uh, well, no, no, we won't. Well, we we might talk about this on Wednesday. So it seems that a preschool in Massachusetts has decided to outlaw the phrase "best friend" from within its walls and presumably on its playground. The Anti-Free Association Preschool in the Pentucket Workshop Preschool in Georgetown, Massachusetts or commie-chusets, as some people call it. Uh, not me, I'm just saying some people do. One of the families of a child attending the school found out about the school policy when their daughter informed them that the school would no longer let her call her best friend her best friend. The little girl is Julia. Her mother is Christine Hartwell. That mother, rightly so, has taken her daughter out of that school, calling the ban on the phrase outrageous 
and silly. And I also want to add, this is a private school. It's not a public school, and parents are free to decide whether to keep putting their kids in this horrible school or not. And it appears that a number of parents have decided not to put their kids in a horrible school. But I've written more about it, so I recommend you check the show notes and read that whole freaking article. Canadians attempting to build stealth-busting quantum radar. If you think you can go stealth, guess again. I'm looking at you, F-35s and F-117s. And that's what's pictured if you're watching the video. Them pesky, dangerous Canadians. Man, I always knew they were going to invade us someday. They're preparing. They're looking to create a quantum radar that would totally expose the stealthiest of stealth and make you naked before the entire world. And we have to move on. we got two more stories to briefly try to get to. Two Catalan officials terminated by Madrid. Madrid's efforts to destroy the secessionist movement in Catalonia continues full tilt with the firing of the two Catalan officials, the general director of foreign relations, Marina Falco, and Augusti Colomines, director of public school administration. And finally, real quick here. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Getting down light to one atom is now a thing. So thanks to Graphene, they've done that. Beep, 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 beep. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. That's all we have today for t uh, headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for April 23rd, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to istake.tv slash h055. You can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. You can also search for headlines you may have missed. Our audio version of the show contains the brief introduction and then just the 20 actual minutes of headlines you may have missed. This part I'm talking right now, this isn't on the audio version. And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show and you'll also miss the very end where I respond to comments. Just friend me on Facebook at facebook.com slash visprebus. That's V I V is in Victor I S P R I V is in Victor U S. Don't forget to join me tonight on this daily's full auto with Professor Rambo at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. The page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled "You're Gonna Need a Bigger Bullet." Hoorah! You're gonna have to listen to find out what I'm talking about. As always, remember those who need to control thoughts. Need to control news until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.